my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So today's video is going to be my roundup of Me Made May. So I had originally planned or really hoped that I would have been able to share each week a roundup of what I wore for Me Made May. But I just didn't get the chance really in the week to carve out the time to film the video um, and then edit the video properly. So instead I put a question over on my community tab for YouTube just asking what would everybody's preference be? Um, a breakdown of each week or just an, a one video where I talk about a roundup of Me Made May and the majority of votes went for a roundup of Me Made May. So I am anticipating that this video will be quite long because I'm trying to squish all of my makes in from or well, not my makes. I'm trying to squish in everything that I wore in the month of May um, into one video and I am planning to talk through all the different outfits um, and I'll pop in, um, I was going to say videos, I'll pop in images of all of the outfits that I wore and I'll also pop in line drawings of the patterns and any sizing information for the patterns because I haven't got them all to hand. Um, I did think about getting them all out, but then the video would have been like three hours long if I went into so much detail about every pattern because there were so many different patterns that I wore across the month. Um, so I've opted instead and also I would have ended up with a mammoth job of tidying all of the patterns away. I think it would have taken me hours to get them out and hours to tidy them up. So a little bit of laziness has meant that I haven't got a stack of patterns to talk through with you. But I will insert images of the line drawings and any size information so that you've got them. So if you see anything that I um, wore and you like the look of the pattern, um, you'll know if you would be able to fit into the sizing or not. So May was a really fun month. I love documenting what I am wearing. I think it's really fascinating to see across the month the range of garments that I choose to wear. And for me, for Me Made May, I set myself the challenge of wearing something different every day. And there is a reason behind that, because what I find I tend to do is I make something, love it, wear it for weeks and weeks and weeks, obviously on rotation with other garments that I've made. Um, and then I'll make something else and that becomes my favourite thing to wear. And some of my older makes, which I love and I apps, you know, I really enjoyed sewing, end up being kept in my wardrobe in favour of new things that I'm sewing. So I decided to set myself the challenge of wearing a different outfit every day with no repeats. And the reason I set that challenge was to encourage myself to look back through my wardrobe at some of my older makes, which I love, but I just not really being chosen because I always fall in love with the last thing that I made. I'm sure I'm not the only person that does that. So prior to May, I did an, a wardrobe overhaul. So I pulled things out, thought about whether I would still wear them. Do they still fit? Because I know, you know, all of our bodies are changing constantly. Um, gave some things to my girls because they love wearing my clothes. Now that they're getting older and taller, they can fit into some of my things. Um, and I sorted my wardrobe into colours, so from red all the way to black and white, and I've got some gold and silver and some grey garments too. That made it a little bit easier for me, and that is just the way that I prefer to order my uh, wardrobe. And then I've got my drawers that I've got like my trousers, my dungarees, my t-shirts, my jumpers, um, tops, like my sagebrush tops and that sort of thing, and any of my activewear and PE kits for school. Um, so it does make it easier for me when I open my wardrobe, I can have a look what colour do I feel like I want to wear that day. Um, when I set myself the pledge, I wasn't planning to share on Instagram um, by posting on my grid. I was going to just share in stories and actually I've created a highlight of all of the outfits that I wore across the month of May. But I did end up sharing to my grid and it was really fun actually sharing to my grid and just reflecting on those garments. Um, and why I love wearing them. And it also helped me document and remind myself of the things that I'd already worn that month. So I didn't wear something again. So I did a little tally. I've got my little notes here, but I did a little tally of all the different things that I wore in the month of May. And I did include some jackets and coats and cardigans within that. Um, I wore nine jumpers, two boiler suits, a coatigan, a pair of culottes, nine dresses, 10 dungarees slash jumpsuits, which I was surprised that I wore more dungarees and jumpsuits than I did jumpers. One shirt, one t-shirt, um, four pairs of trousers, two pinafores, a top, a blazer, and two denim jackets. So quite a variety really um, in the month of May. And then I've got lots and lots of different uh, pattern companies. Um, so I wore um, Dear and Dear Myosotis, um, the 
Petra trousers, and then the name of the company is completely gone. I'll pop an image in. Freya Tops Sierra jumpsuit, which I'd completely forgotten that I'd worn. I won't go through all of them now because I'm going to go through them with weeks, but there was loads. I mean, that's a list of all the different patterns that I wore across the month. So many different patterns. I've written down, and I've broken it down into weeks, um, the different garments that I wore across the week. And then week four includes the three extra days for May. Um, I wore four new garments that I made across the month of May and then 27 old garments that I'd already had in my wardrobe, which I think is quite good going for me. I do tend to wear more of my newer makes across the month. Um, so I resisted the temptation to put on some more of my newer garments um, across the month of May. So I'll start with week one. Um, a lot of my garments were worn to work because um, I work five days a week. I'm a primary school teacher, if you don't know, and I work in the early years. Um, and I was thinking about this when I was reviewing my wardrobe for Me Made May. I don't have a separate work wardrobe, home wardrobe. What I tend to do, like this dress that I'm wearing today, I didn't tell you what it is actually, I'll tell you in a second. The dress that I'm wearing today is a dress that I would wear out and about with friends or family, but also I would wear it to work too. This is the Tilly and the Buttons Lotta dress in this gorgeous viscose crepe that I got from, I think I got it from So Me Sunshine. It's either from So Me Sunshine or Fabric Godmother. I can't remember which one. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot of dress with the midi length skirt. And then it's got the elasticated waist, which makes it super comfortable. And then just grown on sleeve, which I absolutely love. This is really comfortable, especially when the weather's really warm. It's quite um, blousy on top, so it means it's quite roomy. And I really like that. I'll pop an image of me wearing that too. All of the garments that I talk about across the four weeks, I will pop images in as I'm talking about them. Um, so week one, I think it start, I think Me Made May started at the weekend um, and I wore, oh and also to say the weather in May wasn't brilliant. We had a lot of windy, wet and cold days. So a lot of these out outfits were wrapped up, cosy and warm um, for work or at the weekend. There was a lot of cardigans and coatigans and just wrapping myself up and a lot of woolly tights being worn, which I was really surprised about in the month of May. I was expecting the weather to be a little bit better. To the first week of Me Made May. So I started off wearing um, one of my favorite dresses, which is the Deer and Dome Maya Sotis dress. And I made this in fashion focused cotton lawn. That's the name of the, the fabric. And I think you can still get a hold of this fabric. Um, and the fabric I got originally from Like So Amazing, it's such a fun um, fabric, it's got all these faces all over it and I love the Maya Sotis dress because it's quite a loose fitting dress so it's really comfortable to wear. Um, you've got the ruffle on the sleeve, the ruffle on the hem, it's got pockets, it's got buttons down the bodice and it's just a really comfortable easy dress to throw on. It was chilly that day so I ended up putting on my um, coatigan which I made in a pink boucle wool that I got from um, Sumi Sunshine and I'll pop an image of that and also the patterns that I talk about. Day two I dug out some Petra trousers that I made ages and ages and ages ago in this green floral viscose really comfortable trousers we ended up going to Kew Gardens actually and I just paired it with my pink Freya top um, which is a Tilly and the Buttons pattern and it was chilly so I had to put on my So Over It cocoon coat which is in a green melt and wool which I absolutely love it's one of my first coats that I ever made and I just love the colour of it it's so beautiful and Lola actually joined in with Me Made May on that day because she made um, a dress um, so she had that dress on. Um, so I'll pop a picture in of us both wearing those. Um, and they were really comfortable, the Petra trousers. I don't know why I won't, don't wear them more often. I do tend to go for dresses. Um, and looking at my wardrobe and thinking about what I wear, I love pockets. I love things that are comfortable. And the Petra trousers have got an elastic channel in the back and they're flat fronted uh, waistband at the front and they've got these lovely deep pockets so I do need to get those out a bit more that's one really great thing that I found taking part in Me Made May it's made me look back at some of my older makes which I don't wear but I absolutely love and it's encouraged me to get them out because they're perfect for work as well they're just so comfortable um, day three I wore the paper cut Sierra jumpsuit which I made in a blue linen fabric and I haven't worn this half as much as I should and I've no idea why Although actually, I think it's because I struggled with knowing what to wear underneath. It's just a navy blue um, jumpsuit. I'll put pictures in. 
I ended up wearing it with a purple and blue floral billy jumper, um, which was really comfortable. But I think I've got some short sleeve t-shirts, which I think it would go perfectly with. So I need to get that out and wear it a little bit more. I think I probably also don't wear it as much because it's made from linen and it creases quite badly. But I am just learning to go with the creases, even when I have ironed things. Um, day four was some Nina Lee Portobello trousers. And this was a new pair of trousers. Um, the lovely Claire, um, who is Sewing Bear 27, I think I've said your name correctly, um, sent me, so lovely and thoughtful, she just sent me some um, fabric. No reason whatsoever, just as a really lovely, nice thing to do, and it just really made my day. And as soon as the fabric arrived, I knew instantly that it needs to become a pair of trousers. So I whipped it up quite quickly and I'm really pleased that I did because I've got some really lovely uh, portobello trousers now that will be a great staple in my wardrobe for work. And then I paired it with one of my favourite I Am Joy Tops, which is in this like cotton voile fabric and it's got flowers all embroidered all over it. I do love the I Am Joy pattern. Um, it's a lovely simple blouse top with poofy sleeves and that's gathered into some elastic but it's quite relaxed fit sleeve. Um, it's got almost like a boat neck um, neckline. The only downside to that pattern is it's quite limited size range, um, which is a shame really. And I'm hoping that I am patterns are going to extend the size range for the I am joy because it's a really straightforward blouse to sew up, quite easy to fit and really comfortable. On day five, I dug out one of my favourite cord um, boiler suits, which is the Gimlet boiler suit by Our Lady of Leisure Patterns. And it's just in a um, pink cord, like a chunky pink cord that I got from Simi Sunshine. It's one of my favourite things to wear. It's so comfortable. And it's just got this tie belt um, that you fasten at the front. Really lovely deep pockets. It's got a collar and then it's got buttons down. I ex actually extended the bodice because um, I felt like it was a bit short in the bodice. So I extended it by, I think I added an extra two inches on um, just to make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, but it's one of my favourite things to wear. And I enjoy wearing it to work as well as um, just out and about with family. Um, and the pink corduroy was such good quality. So actually it's the perfect thing to chuck on for work. Um, because I'm, when I'm crawling around on the floor or building, you know, Lego with them or um, helping them paint, it's, it's quite a hard wearing garment to wear. So it's perfect for work. And then on day six, I popped on my floral Bakerloo dress. Um, in a cotton poplin that I got as part of a Fabric Godmother Dream Wardrobe dress. And I did a contrast ruffle around the collar. Um, full length sleeves gathered into the elastic, which I absolutely adore. It's got pockets. Um, and yeah, it's just a really fun dress, really colourful and bright. Um, and it just makes me feel really good about myself when I pop it on. And it just makes me smile. Like, it makes me smile thinking about it. Such a fun, bright, colourful dress that if I'm ever feeling a bit... Um, I guess tired or not really excited about work or um, just need a boost um, I pop that on and it does really make me smile so I enjoyed wearing that one and then on day seven it was PE day at school so I had my PE uniform on we do have a uniform um, for our PE lessons at school um, and I popped on some of my um, leggings which are the sew over it leggings the name has completely escaped me I can't remember what the leggings are called it's a sew over it pattern. I'll pop an image in of what they look like. But yeah, I popped on some of my really bright, colourful leggings uh, from Sew Over It. It was a bit chilly, so I popped on a coatigan as well. I've got the Jesse coatigan by Sew Over It using some really fun um, coatigan fabric. Coatigan fabric? Is that the right word? Coating fabric. I think it's coating. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, that I got from Fabric Godmother. And it's so snuggly and warm. It's one of my favourite coatigans that I've ever made. Um, and then in the evening, on a Friday, I like to get home from work, have a shower and put on my pyjamas or loungewear. So I got changed into my um, Studio Jetson Wow Jumper and then some Millie joggers, which are field work patterns jogger. Um, really comfortable in this amazing leopard print fabric that I got from Like So Amazing. Um, it's just a really comfortable thing to put on on a Friday evening. Because what I tend to do on a Friday is either I'll have some videos to edit or I will do a tiny bit of sewing um, and listen to a podcast and have a glass of wine or a gin and tonic. And it's just one of my favourite things to do. I love thinking about the anticipation of the weekend and the things that I can get up to. So that was week one. Um, lots of things that suited my work life, but also my home life. 
Um, lots of colour. It was great to rediscover some things that I've had in my wardrobe that I guess have become unloved or forgotten about, like my Petra trousers. I'm definitely going to make sure that I wear those more. Um, because they're in a viscose, they're perfect for the summer weather or when it's just slightly a little bit cool and then I could just pop a t-shirt on or um, one of my short sleeved blouses. So that was week one. And then on to week two. So in week two, I had one, two, three, three dresses, three jumpsuits and a pair of culottes. So day one, I popped on my Safia jumpsuit um, with a Tilly in the Buttons Agnes t-shirt. So the jumpsuit is in a linen fabric. I think it was a bis was it a viscose linen? I can't remember. Don't think it was a viscose linen actually because it wasn't very drapey. I think it was just a linen fabric that I got from Sony Sunshine in like a navy blue colour. And I made these over a year ago, but I haven't worn them a massive amount. And I don't I, I was going to say I don't know why, but I know why. It's because the fabric creases. But as I said for week one, I am just going to embrace the creases because that shows that it's a loved garment and it's worn. And I popped it on with a Tilly in the Buttons Agnes t-shirt, which is long sleeved um, and stripes. And I really love this Agnes t-shirt and I don't know why I haven't made more of them. So I'm definitely going to dig that pattern out and make some more Agnes tees. But I'm going to make some short length, uh, short sleeved Agnes tees. It's a scooped um, neckline, which I really like, and it's quite fitted. So I think it would go with quite a lot of my um, pinafores and my um, dungarees that I've made. So I definitely need to dig that pattern out and make some more Agnes tees. Day two was Leo dungarees, and then I've got a mustard South Bank sweater, which is a Nina Lee pattern. Really comfortable. I love the Leo dungarees. They're by Leo dungarees. is a by hand London pattern. Um, quite oversized, loose fitted, really voluminous trousers. They've got a bib front and back and then they fasten with ties on the shoulder. I've got a pair made in a William Morris style viscose twill fabric and they're so comfortable. And it was cold on that day. I do remember it being really cold. I think it might have been when we had that really strong wind. And um, so I popped on my mustard um, Southbank sweater, which is like a waffle knit fabric and it's really cozy. I love the Southbank sweater. It's got a really cozy, comfortable um, neck band, really deep cuffs and a band on the bottom. It just feels really comfortable. It keeps you nice and warm too. Great pattern. I've made loads of South Banks. On day three, I wore a new make, which was a Lyra and Safia Bow Tilly and the Buttons Patterns hack. So I'd seen in the shops a jumpsuit, which was a shirt top button down and it had a collar with short sleeves. Um, and then it had sort of like a, I can't remember if it was gathered at the waistband or whether it had a tie or a belt on. And then it was um, like collot style trousers, three quarter length trousers. Um, fell in love with it and I thought, I started to think about what patterns I had in my stash that would work together to create that kind of jumpsuit look. Um, I had some fabric that I'd been given, again by the lovely Claire, which is who is Sewing Bear 27. We did a fabric swap of our Sew Hilly Jane fabric and gifted each other some other fabric too. Um, so I used, ended up using that fabric because that week at school we were going to be learning about the safari and that fabric had some safari animals on, so it was just perfect. So I had a go at using that fabric to um, hack the Sophia um, jumpsuit, which is a um, book from the Make It Simple book. I've got it here, actually. So I had a go at hacking the Tilly and the Buttons Sophia jumpsuit, and I just used the culottes um, part of the pattern with the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress, which I absolutely adore. I've made so many versions already. And I wanted to just use the top part of the shirt dress and then the trouser piece of the jumpsuit from the Make It Simple book. Um, keep the waist ties um, and then just see if I could create a really comfortable jumpsuit and use the waist ties to sort of bring in the waist and create a little bit of shaping. It was a really straightforward hack. I'm going to do a tutorial on it because I've had lots of people request the tutorial. Um, so I'll get that filmed. Hopefully next weekend I'll get that filmed because I'm going to make another one up. Um, as I film it so I can show you but it was a really easy hack all I had to do in the end really was add an extra inch to the bodice because the jumpsuit um, if you're going to make the culottes and there is um, instructions in this book just to make them as culottes let me see if I can show you yeah so you can just make them as culottes and they're meant to be quite high-waisted culottes 
So all I needed to make sure was that the top of the trousers was sitting on my natural waist and that the shirt had enough length on it so that when I attached the two, um, it wasn't going to pull on the shirt or the trousers weren't going to be pulled up because I wanted to make sure that it was still a little bit blousy on top. So I ended up adding, I think, an extra inch onto the shirt part, the bodice part of the shirt dress. Um, and the collots, I think I just kept as they were. Um, I didn't put elastic in because the collots, you're supposed to put elastic waistband in and I didn't add the waistband. I might have added an extra centimetre onto the trousers. I will make it really clear when I do the tutorial exactly what I did. And then I put waist ties in so that you could fasten it like a belt and that created the blousiness on top and also obviously kept the trouser part where you want it to sit. So really straightforward hack, but you know, really comfortable. Um, and I was really pleased that it actually turned out exactly how I imagined it would turn out. On day four, it was another chilly day. So I popped on my um, Jennifer Lauren handmade bastion clots in a floral fabric that's a viscose twill, so it's quite weighty and I love how they swish. Um, and that fabric was from fabric, uh, not fabric or mother, that fabric was from Rainbow Fabrics. Um, and then I paired it with a Tilly in the Buttons Freya jumper just in a um, viscose jersey that I got from Sumi Sunshine, which was like a sage green colour. Um, and then also I popped on my Sorrento jacket, my corduroy sew over it Sorrento jacket. On day five, continuing with the jungle theme for our safari week, I popped on my jungle themed lotta dress. Um, using a really fun viscose fabric that I got from Sony Sunshine and it's um, like a jungle print and it's got lots of animals hiding in it and the children had so much fun spotting all the animals and counting how many animals they had on my dress. So day six was another new make. So I had some red viscose crepe fabric that I got from Sony Sunshine which as soon as Harriet shared it I fell in love with. And red is not a colour that I go, you know, it's not a colour that I'm drawn to time and time again. Um, but for some reason, this fabric, I just fell in love with it. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I really enjoyed sewing up the Lyra dress using the crepe. Because it was a crepe fabric, it was slightly bouncier when I was sewing with it. So it didn't press as brilliantly as perhaps a cotton would. Um, so it was slightly trickier to sew with, but I just really took my time, especially around the collar um, and doing the buttonholes. And I tested it on a scrap of that fabric. Um, I was really pleased with the end result and I found some gold buttons that I got from Felicity Fabrics that I had in my button stash that went perfectly with the fabric too. Um, so yeah, it was really fun, um, really fun make, really enjoyable and I'm really pleased with how the dress turned out. Um, and I was really surprised actually how I felt wearing that red dress because it's not a colour that I'm normally drawn to. Um, but I did get lots of compliments throughout the day, so it must be a colour um, that suits me. So the final day of week two was an old dress that I absolutely love. And I made this 2000 and so it can't have been last year. 2019, it must have been when I went to the sewing weekender. Um, so I had some green floral cotton poplin um, in my stash that I got from a de-stash. I can't remember who was de-stashing the fabric. But anyway, it's fabric that I'd had in my stash for ages. And when I went to the sewing weekend, I planned to sew up the Cocoa Crafts honeycomb dress. It's one of my favourite dresses. There's so many variations with it. And when I shared my roundup of my favourite blouses blog, which I'll link down below if you haven't checked it out, I share a bit more detail about that pattern and why I love it. It's got really lovely seam lines which helps with fitting it's got some cute ties that you can put on the sides that bring it in and give a bit of shape it's got pockets and it's got mandarin collar and it's got a button placket down the front um, really lovely construction it's got a yoke in the back and you attach the yoke using, using the burrito method and Anna's instructions are amazing that is how I learned to do the burrito method um, so it's definitely one of my favorite patterns the pattern, the dress that I made at the same weekend, I chose to do sleeveless so that I could wear it in the summer. So when I chose to wear my green floral honeycomb dress, the weather was still really chilly. So I just popped on a ready to wear long sleeve black top that I had in my wardrobe. Um, and I bought this top like way before I was sewing um, and it's still going really strong. So at the moment, I'm not going to be sewing any plain black or white long sleeve tops because I've got a couple in my wardrobe that I just got from the high street, which are going strong. 
Um, and I don't know about you, but the idea of sewing a plain black or white long sleeve or short sleeve t-shirt is just not exciting for me at the moment. Um, so whilst I've got those ones that still work, I'm just going to keep on wearing them. So that was week two. Quite surprised actually how many jumpsuits I opted for, but I guess with a jumpsuit, it's a full on outfit. I don't need to worry about tights or anything like that. They're super comfortable to wear. So week three, um, the first day of week three, I popped on another of my favorite um, boiler suits and it's the same pattern that I talked about when I talked about my pink boiler suit. So it's the Our Lady of Leisure Gimlet Boiler Suit. And I had some floral fine needle cord fabric. Again, I got this from a D-stash. Um, and I just love the colours in this fabric. There's sort of blues and reds in it. And it's just a really pretty fabric and really pretty combination of colours. Um, so I wore that. Again, it's just an all-in-one outfit. Don't really need to think about what I'm going to pair it with. And I think I just had some blue, navy blue um, pumps that I wore with that. And some socks to keep my feet warm. Because it's still it was still really chilly at this point. Day two, um, I dug out my Tilly and the Buttons Jessa trousers, which I made using a green corduroy fabric that I got from Felicity Fabrics. And then I paired it with my floral Cali shirt. I think the sun must have come out uh, for this day. Um, and I love that combination. I love the fabric that I've made my Cali in. It's like a, a mint green um, rayon fabric, really buttery soft, um, with flowers on and clementines on really beautiful and it goes really nicely with my jessa trousers because they're a um like a forest green color so the two colors go really nicely together and it's a combination that again i'd forgotten about so it was great actually that me made may really pushed me to revisit some combinations that i'd forgotten about and it kept me really nice and warm and my jessa trousers have got pockets too i am all about the pockets where possible on to day three, and I dug out one of my um, Tilly and the Buttons Billy jumpers, and I love this jumper because it's quite roomy, but it still keeps you nice and cosy. And for this Billy, I used some fabric that I got from Like So Amazing, which was, um, I sewed it up as part of the um, Galentine's challenge that Sarah was hosting. Um, so it's a pink background with lots of little love hearts on, and I did do the big voluminous sleeve for that version. Um, and I just paired it with one of my Tilly and the Buttons Bobby pinafores, um, which is the Billy, no, not the Billy, Bobby pinafore. Um, and I've got a couple of those pinafores, which I absolutely love. It's got a bib front, you've got um, straps that cross over at the back, fairly fitted at the waist, and then sort of um, a skirt that goes out ever so slightly, lovely big pockets too. And then it's buttoned down, all the way down through the skirt as well. Really comfortable to wear. Um, and I made that just in a navy corduroy, so it goes with quite a lot of things that I've got in my wardrobe. Day four was another new make. So it was another hack, the same hack as before, combining the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress, the top part with the Tilly and the Buttons Sophia jumpsuit collot trouser section um, to create a jumpsuit. And I used some blue leopard print fabric that came in a So Haley Jane box. Um, and it was a really comfortable make. Um, the fabric that came was a viscose um, and it just felt really comfortable in a light blue. Now I love blue. I think blue is a colour that really suits my um, skin tone and also my hair colour. Um, and this was a really enjoyable sew and I absolutely loved the fabric this month. You can tell if I absolutely love the fabric that comes in the box because I get it in the wash and get it sewn up as soon as possible. Sometimes the fabric will sit in my stash for a while and I don't really have an idea as to what I'm going to turn into and eventually the right project comes along. But sometimes the fabric arrives, I get an idea and I just instantly have to turn it into that garment. And that's exactly what happened with this blue leopard print viscose fabric. Day five was an old favourite of mine and I made these about three years ago. So this, I remember being one of um, the first big projects that I tackled when I'd been sewing for about a year. And it's the Closet Core Jenny Overalls. It was the first time doing a lap zip at the side. It was the first time putting in like a waistband. Um, and I love these overalls. They are not perfect. You know, if you looked at them and inspected them, there's some wibbly wobbly seam lines. Um, yeah, and they're not sewn absolutely immaculately. But every time I get them out, I'm reminded of that sense of achievement that I got when I finally finished them. I remember them taking me weeks to make because there was loads of different steps. 
really enjoyable sew, but I remember it being a really intense sew where I learned so many new skills and it was a real step up for me where I thought, wow, yeah, I, I've learned to sew. Like I can actually make something that, you know, is, is quite you know, it was quite fitted um, and had lots of lovely little details. And I just, I remember feeling that sense of achievement and just feeling really proud of myself. So every time I get this um, dungaree set out, I'm just reminded of that. And I just paired it with a Nina Lee Southbank sweater, which I've got in a rainbow striped jersey fabric that I got from Material Galora when she was doing fabrics. Um, yeah, and that set just really makes me smile because of that sense of achievement and just that realisation that I could actually sew um, and sew something that fitted me and I felt really comfortable. So I do love putting the Jenny overalls on. Day six was the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo um, in this lovely green viscose fabric, which again, I got from Material Girl Laura and I remember falling in love with this fabric and I still love it now. It's absolutely beautiful. It's such a lovely colour. Green is by far my favourite colour. Um, and yeah, this is a dress that just makes me feel really good about myself. Um, so I really enjoyed wearing that. And I used the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo add-on pack to add the ruffle and do the button down back detail on that one. Um, and again, it's just a dress that makes me feel really good about myself. So I really enjoyed wearing that one. And then day seven was another pair of dungarees, but this time it was the, used to be made by Jack's mum, but they're now called Waves and Wild heyday dungarees and I love the heydays I've got about four pairs in my wardrobe I think they're just super comfortable easy to pop on and I just popped a, a South Bank um, sweater on underneath um, which is a fleece lined oh it's so soft and snuggly fleece lined um, jersey fabric um, and it's got all pictures of ladies on and it's really fun and I love the combination of that jumper with my heyday dungarees because they're a corduroy dungaree in like a petrol blue. I think I got that fabric from um, Felicity Fabrics. So another of my favourite combinations of a top and um, jumpsuit or dungarees. So that was week three. Again, a mixed bag, really, of trousers, shirts, jumpers, jumpsuit. I mean, jumpsuits actually were, jumpsuits, boiler suits um, were the flavour of that week. I wore one, two, three, four jumpsuits or, or boiler suits. And then I also wore um, a pinafore. And then a dress and some trousers. So a bit of a mixed bag for week three. And then on to the final week, which includes the last couple of days of May, which don't quite fit into another week. So I've tacked them on to the end of week four. Um, so again, it was quite chilly to begin with. And then it did get warmer. You can tell with what I'm wearing as the weather improves, some of my summer garments come out. Um, so the first day of week four, I popped on one of my favourite pinafores, which is um, the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Ivy Pinafore. Now, I've only made one of these pinafores, and I remember making it way back when I first started sewing, so probably about three and a half years ago. It's a lined pinafore. It's quite a loose um, fit, so I don't know why I haven't made more of these, because every time I put it on, I feel really comfortable. It's got pockets. I really like the fit and it goes with loads of jumpers that I've got in my wardrobe. So I do need to get that pattern out and make it up a bit more. So I made, it's just a black corduroy, which means it also goes with a huge amount of things in my wardrobe. Now, one thing to say about this, and I don't know if you'll be able to see in the image that I pop in, but I use some painted wooden buttons um, to fasten it because they fasten here and all the paints come off. So I'm just left with just a plain wood button, but it, 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 I'm worried about it going tatty because it's not varnished or anything all the paints washed off and I'm not quite sure the best way to um, sort of preserve the buttons so I don't know whether to just varnish them or there's a special paint that I'm supposed to use for the buttons so if anyone could let me know please let me know in the comments below I don't know the best way to go back over um, the, the fact that the paints rubbed off or it's just flaked off as they've been washed and I do want to make sure that the buttons don't start to disintegrate as I wear them and wash them. So it'd be great to get your tips. And then I just popped it on with a Tilly and the Buttons Billy Jumper, which is made in this really fun dancing bears fabric that I got from um, the New Craft House, which I absolutely love. Um, and I wore it to work a few weeks, well, before me made May when I first made it. And there was a little girl who just kept following me around because she loved the bear print. 
So I ended up taking in a scrap of that fabric just to give to the little girl that had some dancing bears on um, so that she had her own little um, section of the fabric. I luckily had a little scrap of that fabric so I could give it to her because she just kept following me around, stroking the bears and saying bears, which was really cute. So day two, I popped on a green Sophia jumpsuit using some linen fabric that I got from Sony Sunshine. And again, for some reason, I haven't worn this as much as I would like to. And I think, again, it comes back to that linen content of the fabric creasing. I just paired it with, I've got a jungle print Tabitha t-shirt. And the Tabitha t-shirt is a Tilly in the Buttons pattern from the Make It Simple book. Um, and it, the combination, I think, works really nicely. Um, the jumpsuit is really comfortable and I think it is just the fact that it creases that I haven't worn it much, um, which is a shame. Me Made May has made me get both of those jumpsuits out and I'm definitely going to have them in rotation because it's a really comfortable jumpsuit, especially to wear to work because it's quite roomy. So for, you know, crawling around or running around, chasing the children, um, getting up and down like I need to um, throughout my day, I think it'll be a really comfortable garment to wear to work. And I think now I've got enough t-shirts and jumpers to pair it with, I'll definitely get more wear out of it. Day three was um, a favourite combination of garments for me. Um, although I was a little bit sad. So I popped on, um, I've got a mustard, it's made in a denim mustard fabric, Bobby Pinafore, which is Tilling the Buttons pattern. Um, I love wearing this pinafore. And then I've got a Nina Lee Richmond blazer, which I made in an African wax print fabric. Um, and I just love the combination of the mustard print pinafore uh, with the Richmond blazer because the colours are quite similar and the pattern on the blazer is just really fun. And then I normally pair it with, I've got a toaster sweater, um, which is a So House 7 pattern. Again, I should get this pattern out more and use it. Um, a toaster sweater, which I made in a Ponte Roma fabric, which I got, I can't remember where I got it from, probably from Fabricland when I first started sewing. It accidentally got put in the dryer and it's miniature now and I cannot even, it's like so cropped, it comes up to here, it's ridiculous. So I'm going to have to give it to Ruby or Lola and see if they can fit in it, otherwise it will get cut up and used to fill a poof when I eventually get around to finishing my closet core poof. Um, but I was so sad, it's one of my favourite jumpers but it must have just accidentally got bundled into the dryer and it's completely shrunk. Um, so I need to get some more navy um, just some jersey fabric and I will make a South Bank or a toaster sweater because it was one of my favourite things to pair with things like my body pin Bobby Pinafore. So I'm really sad that I don't have that jumper now. So I just paired it with a black ready to wear top which still worked but I just felt like navy would have gone better. Um, so yeah I was really sad to, to discover that that jumper doesn't fit me anymore. So day four, it was still a little bit chilly, but I thought I'm just going to embrace the weather and I will freeze. I'm prepared to freeze because I just wanted to start wearing some of my um, summer makes. So I dug out one of my favourite um, Zadie jumpsuits and it's in this lovely peacock African wax print fabric. And I made this a couple of years ago. I made it actually, we went on a holiday to Cornwall and I took my sewing machines with me and I made it on holiday there. So every time I put it on, I'm just reminded of those beautiful we had a um sort of a holiday home that looked out onto the sea and i'm just reminded every time i wear that jumpsuit of that lovely holiday that we had and those beautiful sea views um whilst i was sewing that up it's one of my favorite jumpsuits to wear i love the zadie and i'm actually really surprised it took me until week four to dig out my zadies because i've got quite a collection of those as well so i'll definitely dig out a few more hopefully as the weather starts to warm up on day five, I was wearing this dress, which is the Tilly and the Buttons Lotta dress in this gorgeous um, viscose crepe fabric. Now, I can't remember where I got it from. I think I said it was either Fabric Godmother or um, Semi Sunshine. I love this combination of pink and red, and I love the Lotta. It's just such a comfortable dress to wear. Day six was a Lyra shirt dress, which I made in a floral cotton poplin that I got from Fabric Godmother. Um, and I really enjoy wearing my Lyra dresses to work. I feel quite smart but comfortable. Uh, I've got pockets so I can stick all my bits and bobs in there that I need to, like post-it notes when I'm writing things down when I'm working with the children or the bits and pieces that they pass to me uh, throughout the day. Quite often I'll come home with, you know, bits of Lego or, um, I don't know, little pictures that they've drawn for me that I've stuck in my pockets throughout the day or marbles that I've found on the floor that I need to put back with the marble run. Um, it's always interesting emptying my pockets at the end of the day um, and seeing what I've been getting up to and what I've also been given. 
And then day seven was a True Bias Nova jumpsuit in this lovely um, red and white viscose jersey fabric. Um, and then I popped on a Sorrento um, denim jacket over the top of that because it was just slightly chilly. Um, and the Sorrento denim jacket was made in this dark egg blue fabric. I've got quite a few Sorrento jackets because when I made it last summer, I just fell in love with the pattern and made quite a few to go with all the different garments that I've got in my wardrobe. It's a really great jacket just for chucking on when it's slightly chilly. So I paired it with my Nova jumpsuit and um, yeah, it's a really lovely combination actually. And I've been wearing my Nova jumpsuit just with a short sleeve t-shirt and actually with a long sleeve t-shirt for when the weather's still slightly chilly. Um, because the Nova jumpsuit, um, you've got these quite thick straps, but it's sleeveless. Um, so yeah, I've just been popping a t-shirt on underneath because I'm just desperate to get some wear out of these summer clothes um, whilst the weather's still been remaining quite chilly, although we've had a couple of really warm days, which has been great. And then day eight was continuing with the So Hilly Jane theme. Um, it was a Westcliff dress that I made using the white and blue striped um, viscous jersey that came in a box not too long ago that had daisies all over it and I used it to make the Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress inspired by the lovely Tamlin who's sewn on the tine. I love the Westcliff dress, it definitely feels like secret pyjamas but it's really comfortable and quite swishy to wear um, so I really enjoy wearing it. It's not a dress I don't think I would be able to wear to work because it's maxi length if you add the ruffle but I have got a lemon print dress that I think I would be able to wear to work because it finishes at my knee um, and because it's a faux wrap I feel quite secure on top, I don't feel like I'm going to expose myself um, and it was great being paired just with a denim jacket as well. Day nine, I dug out one of my favourite floral dresses that I made. I think I made this last summer and it's the True Bias Shelby romper and dress pattern and I made the maxi length version of this dress. I adore the shape of this dress, it's so beautiful. Um, it's got lots of panels which creates beautiful shaping. It's got a little tie in the back so you can put it in if you want to. Buttons all the way down, which I'm not going to lie, I was terrified about putting in that many buttons and buttonholes. But I just took my time, made sure that I measured them accurately um, and it was absolutely fine. And I love wearing this dress. I think the shape that you get from all of the panels that make up the construction gives it a really lovely sort of floaty feel when you're wearing it. Um, and uh, it's made in a blue floral fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. And then day 10, I dug out one of my favourite jumpsuits. I've said this about everything that I've um, talked about in this video, but I do love all of my clothes that I've made. Um, so day 10 was um, a jumpsuit day. I dug out a jumpsuit, which is the Lynn jumpsuit by Selkie Patterns. And I made this probably about a year ago, if not a year and a half ago. Um, just using some cotton fabric that I got from a D-stash, which was quite bright. Um, and I think maybe this is why I haven't reached for this jumpsuit as often as maybe I would like to. I really enjoyed wearing this. We went on a day trip to Kew Gardens and I wore it around Kew. So I blended in really nicely with all of the brightly coloured flowers that were in bloom at Kew. Um, it's a really bright green sort of... Um, the predominant colour is like a bright green and then it's got lots of really bright pink flowers all over it. Um, every time I put it on, it really makes me smile because it's really bright and colourful. Um, but yeah, I don't get it out as much as I perhaps should do. So this uh, this challenge and giving myself the challenge of just wearing a different garment every day has really made me get out some of my older makes and it's encouraged me to wear them more often than I have been wearing them. So that was everything that I wore in the month of May. Um, I stuck with my challenge. I'm really pleased that I stuck with my challenge. And I did manage to wear a different garment every day. And I was really surprised that I only snuck in four new makes. Um, it's made me think really carefully about my wardrobe. It's made me reflect on the things that I'm putting out. Um, and it has made me, I guess it's encouraged me to dig out some of those old makes instead of just reaching for those things that I've made that week or that weekend that I fall in love with. And I'm definitely going to continue just pulling out some of my older makes and maybe have them on rotation in my wardrobe because I've definitely got lots more, like the Petra trousers, I've made a good few pairs of those but I don't wear them very often so I need to get those out. Um, in terms of gaps in my wardrobe, I think I do still need some more plain garments. Um, so I'm planning to make a um, Camden, Nina Lee Camden um, skirt, just in a navy needle cord. And I think that will go with quite a lot of my 
brighter tops. Um, I don't need any more dresses, but I will probably still make dresses because it's my favourite thing to make. Um, it's made me want to revisit some of my older um, patterns, like the Sierra jumpsuit, which is the paper cut patterns. I've only made one of those. I really want to make another um, Jennifer Lauren Ivy pinafore because I love wearing that pinafore. Um, and I also want to make some more Agnes tees because wearing that striped scoop necked Agnes tee just made me realise that I absolutely love that fit of that t-shirt too. Um, I've got a lot of clothes. I'm really lucky that I've got a lot of clothes and I've got a lot of bright colours in my wardrobe. And I also learned from this month that I still love wearing bright colours. Um, and I'm also just going to embrace any creases that I get in my clothes. Um, and I will obviously iron them if they come out of my drawers and they're horrendously creased. I will still iron them. But with like the jumpsuits that crease throughout the day, I'm just going to embrace the creases. Um, Me Made May was really fun to be part of again. Um, and I'm really looking forward to already next year's Me Made May. I have to think, I've got a year to think of my pledge next year. Um, last year I set myself the challenge of um, rainbow Me Made May, so I had to wear a different colour across the week, so the seven colours of the rainbow I took a colour each day and that was really fun, I really enjoyed doing that and the way that I've organised my wardrobe now would lend itself really nicely to that, so maybe I'll combine both of those pledges next year, wear a different garment every day for the month of May but also wear a different colour, I don't know if that would be too tricky. Um, I hope you enjoyed that roundup of what I wore in the month of May and for Me Made May. I did manage to stick my stick to my pledge. Let me know in the comments below if you managed to stick to your pledge and what it was. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do consider hitting that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring out another video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye.